This is Fern the Bus, our home on wheels, uh, custom motorhome, tiny house, whatever you want to call it. We're happy to show you around today, so come on inside. We're Ben and Mandy. We're sitting here in our bus, Fern. Technically it's Fern 2 because this is the second build that we've done that a lot of people would think is very similar or almost identical. But the fact is we love a project and we enjoy building these buses. For this area we really prioritized storage, having enough compartments to have all of our stuff tucked away and have a place for it all. We've got our two range stove, which has been wonderful and doesn't make any road noise, which was a priority of ours. We have just a small refrigerator that is perfect for our needs. Along with a nice drawer with more storage. We've got drawers with full extending glides, soft clothes that also kind of provide some friction when you pull out. So when we take those sharp turns, I don't fly out. Food storage is underneath here. Some extra odds and ends in this tall cabinet, bug spray, medicines, trash can. Um, we've got a beautiful farmhouse sink that is bigger than what we thought we would want, but having the extra space definitely just allows for more dishes to pile up. <laughs> Sorry. It's actually a perfect size for us on the road. Sawyer sits in here and can take a bath, or we actually are able to fit all of our dishes in here. We've got some pantry space up here that we keep um, spices and snacks and dinnerware. And that's the kitchen area. So I teach second grade and Ben works on boats and we travel when we are able. Um, sometimes we can travel for a couple weeks at a time, a couple months at a time, a couple days at a time. Um, and we take with us our two-year-old son, Sawyer. Um, we had a bus before Sawyer. We have a different bus after Sawyer. And he loves it more than we do. He does. When we're not on the bus, he's asking about the bus. I lived on a bus, my first bus, in my college days with my two best friends and traveled across the country volunteering our time. We called it the Lost Bus, which stands for Lending Our Services Traveling. And living for that year and a half out of a school bus just kind of put it in my blood and it's always been part of me and Mandy was crazy enough to support <laughs> us buying one for ourselves and she had a lot of trust in me when I told her what it could be and what we can make it together and uh, we're really happy with how it turned out. We don't get to live on the road full time but whenever we can squeeze in a trip, we do. Yep. This is our closet in Fern. Um, it also doubles as a bathroom. I have a just a marine grade portable toilet that works perfect for our family. We keep our shower supplies. I've got a vacuum in here, which is key for keeping it clean. And we've usually got all of our hanging clothes um, up here. And then we've got our hamper. So here we have uh, what is used as Mandy's closet. Just a nice open cabinet. We put some solid surface quartz there just to switch up the wood tones. This wall and most walls in the bus is a cedar tongue and groove. You'll see a lot of cedar, a lot of painted pine and poplar. Uh, curtain rods are copper. This is just copper plumbing pipe used as curtain rods and Mandy made these Curtains all custom for each window with snaps and magnetic clasps. So when everything's closed up, there's no gaps. It's a nice, tight, dark room in here if we want it to be. Welcome to the bed. This is a queen size bed. Um, we upgraded to a queen from the last bus and have zero regrets with that. We have upper cabinets here. This is Ben's closet, also a diaper changing station for Sawyer. Got this nice little curtain slide on magnets. Uh, 
again, just trying to make it feel more like a, a bedroom and less like a studio with a toddler. So we've got open shelving up here that we really haven't found a use for just because we've got so much other storage in this bus. So it is just kind of for decoration. We've got an outlet right here for charging and an outlet underneath here. So each side of the bed has their own outlet. And we've got wraparound curtains with magnetic clasps to keep them closed. Welcome, here we are at the helm. Up here you'll see kind of a blend of original factory school bus and custom renovations. This is a international school bus from 1992. She's got a really friendly horn. When we heard the horn, we knew we had to have her. It's got the five-speed manual transmission, which we love. I find it gives me a lot more control and mountain passes and stuff like that. I'm always thankful for the, the control of a manual. I'm sitting in the original driver's seat. Um, basically, we just restored it and had some custom upholstery done. Little dashboard helm console here that collects all of our registration and papers and that kind of thing. Cubbies for shoes. We left the original school bus door intact, so it's just a manual bifold door with a entry key, so it is locking and secure. Here's the entryway staircase right here. You'll see our switches for our awning. Uh, we installed this awning from Carefree of Colorado. It's just fully electric with the push of a button. We can just turn this thing on and retract and extend our awning. And we also have this little step light that's controlled right here. One thing that we couldn't live without was a rooftop deck. We do a ton of stargazing and hanging out up there. So here's the ladder to access it. It's a pretty simple deck concept. We built it all out of cedar since cedar is lightweight. We didn't want to add too much weight to the top of the bus. Come on up and we'll check it out. You'll see it houses our 400 watts of solar power here. We've got a lot of open space. Sometimes we store gear up here. Um, we got a couple tie downs. You'll see our bike tires or random totes full of gear up here, depending on what we're doing and where we're going. Um, but it's a nice versatile space that is practical and also just enjoyable. All right, here we are on the back of the bus. Um, you'll see some fork mounts for our bike racks. When we're traveling, we'll have each of our bikes hanging vertically on the back of the bus here. And then our garage door. We left the original bus door intact, and this allows us to access a ton of storage underneath the bed here. So this is where we keep all of our camping gear and cooking gear and really anything that belongs outdoors lives in here. We've got under, I guess what I would call the joists of the bed frame, we've got bungee cord run weaved all the way through so we can hide all kinds of stuff up there. This spigot here is connected to our freshwater system. Um, we have 25 gallons of fresh water underneath the bus and then a 25 gallon gray water tank. But we can attach our outdoor shower right here and then it runs uh, through a propane heater basically. And we'll have our shower head right here and a curtain that wraps around and that's our outdoor shower setup. So we have a fantastic fan instead of air conditioning and we've never felt like we wished we had AC. This thing can pull air from the back of the bus out um, like that and it makes it very comfortable in here even in the heat of the desert. 
Um, another thing is we left the original bus ceiling. It is insulated and we actually love the fact that it's still metal because we use magnets all over this thing. Here we have the couch that I built the electrical system into. Um, overhead we have the solar panels and they're run down into this cabinet here. This is our battery charger and inverter. So two house batteries with 200 amp hours of capacity. Um, we can either run off shore power or run it through the inverter when we're off grid. It's a really simple system but we don't need to power a lot of stuff. We kept it pretty simple. You know, we run the fan, we charge our devices in the refrigerator, and that's really our main energy consumption. So this is our very simple electrical system here. And you can see my DC wiring run into there and going throughout the bus. So not much to it, but it's working out well. Here's the other seating area that we have in the bus. This is all storage underneath. It's wide open space. So underneath our cushions, we can kind of just lift up each section and we store everything from tools to extra oil and coolant. Anything that we need on the road is tucked under here, out of sight, out of mind. Um, the cushions, they're the original bus seats actually reupholstered. So rather than send those to the dumpster, we found a new life for them and they've worked out great. So one of our favorite parts about the van life, bus life, tiny house community is just the people and the ideas and we're inspired by people who think outside of the box and enjoy living life a little bit differently. Um, lately we've been buying and selling a lot of yellow buses because we know it can be intimidating if you don't know what you're getting into and you have a dream to build a schoolie, there's just a lot to know. And we've sold a dozen or so buses in the last year and have met so many of you who are at the beginning of your dream stages and getting ready to take life on the road or in whatever direction. And it's been super fun and inspiring to just be part of this community and through the internet be able to stay in touch and see what everybody's up to. If you're interested in seeing the process of the build, we've documented everything online, so you could follow us at Fern the Bus on Instagram. Um, so yeah, we'd love to connect with you on there, but more than anything, we'd love to see you on the road. We hope to see you soon.